Hello there ladies and gentlemen, Pork Shopper here, and today we're doing another card in depth video, but not just one card, a whole selection of them. In today's video, I'm going to go over the most effective anti-CC cards in the game. I will go over their affinities, heroes they would suit, heroes the cards counter well, and at the end, which cards work well with each other to help you out. First, just to get it out of the way, CC is crowd control. This is where an enemy can control the enemy's movement by giving them debuffs like roots, blinds, stuns, pulls, tethers, slows, you name it. Ever since Monolith launch, CC has been very dominant even with being reduced with recent patches. A strong CC team is still very hard to tackle, say a Bellica mid lane, Sephiroth jungle, Decker support and an Aurora off lane would be hell. But let's jump right into it. First up we have two similar types of cards that do the same thing, Hunter's Guile. It is a 4 CP costing card being in the growth affinity. It gives you 6 power and 60 health with no upgrade bonus, but an active which removes all debuffs from your hero when activated and adds a 120 second cooldown. And the next card which is very similar to Hunter's Guile is being Purity Sensor, an 8 point order card given 30 mana and 60 health but also an active which removes all debuffs not just from you, but from nearby allies too. This costs 80 mana and has the same cooldown being 120 seconds. For Hunter's Guile, it's a cheap 4 point card with a high cooldown, which can save you from a few CC related abilities. First to note that this isn't active. Actives mean they cannot be activated when you are stunned, rooted or tethered, so so you get stunned, you can't just activate Hunter's Guile to remove the stun duration. So very similar to Hunter's Guile, but Purity Center is for the team, so mostly supports will use it like a Decker, Mirror or Nar Bash. The only ability or world ultimate in this case it would be useful and would be against Aurora's ultimate because it is AOE. When Aurora was first released, this card became meta only just because of her. I mean, you could use this card to save an allied hero who has been stunned too, but with how little CXP supports get, it's not really worth it for the odd occasion there. It can be great though against those debuffs such as Bleed, Poison, Burn, Blight, Slowed, and the big one Aurora's ultimate like I said. When she first released the ultimate was devastating but these two cards countered it well. Once she uses her ult there will be a small window where you can move, that's when you activate Hunter's Guile or Purity Sensor to remove her ultimate altogether. So Hunter's Guile is in the growth affinity so which heroes could use it well? Any type of tanks like several Canarbats Rampage, supports like a Muriel or Deco or even Sparrow or Yin but I would currently only use Hunter's Guile against an Aurora or full phase blind if you are a melee hero. Same goes with Purity Sensor being an order only card I'll use on such supports like Decker, Narbas, and Muriel. On any other type of hero, it's not worth it. Next up, we have the big one being Thermo Bond, a must have when you are against any heavy CC team. So, what does it do? It is an 8 point universal card that gives you 120 health and 6 ability armor with a unique passive, Determination. This heals you for 12% of your max health, doesn't matter what your current health is, over 4 seconds when hit by a stun, root, or knockup. This effect can stack so it doesn't have any cool down. Thermo Bond is a mid to late game card for those frontline tanks to stay alive absorbing all the damage and stuns possible to help their team win that engagement. So let's throw an example in there. Most tanks by late game will have around 2500 health to 3500 health, so let's go for around 3000. So your max health is 3000 and then you get hit by a stump. This will trigger determination from Thermo Bond so you'll receive 12% back of 3000 being 360 health which you will get back over those 4 seconds. So that's 90 health back every second second for those 4 seconds equaling 360 health. It may not seem that much but with the armor you should have being a tank it will be a significant amount. Like I said it also stacks so it doesn't matter if you already have 4 MO bond triggered if you get hit by say several through after the first stun that's another 360 health back over 4 seconds so it can get pretty crazy and make you very very hard to kill while you still roam to help your team win that team fight. A question I see a lot is what actually triggers Thermo Bond? Well here are a few you may not actually think do, but actually do. Grutz's pull and ultimate because his ult stuns you for 0.5 seconds. Quan's tether. Phase's energy lance if it fully roots you, her blind apparently does not. Severog's ultimate because it knocks you up. Countless's ultimate because it stuns you for 0.75 seconds. Crunch's empowered right crunch because it knocks you up. And probably a handful more which I haven't even thought of. So it has a lot more uses than you may think from the typical stuns and roots. Just to note, I am getting these from Test and Sum, but mostly from Paragon's official website, for which heroes have stuns, knockups, etc., so they may be a little off. 
Heroes, I would use this card on are full tanks or melee bruisers, so Severog, Fenmail, Grux, Greystone, honestly any hero you personally would play as a tank against any heavy CC team, and with any against any heavy CC team, this is the first card you should have on the list. Another very in meta card is Status Gem, even with its slight nerf recently. Yes, this card doesn't really give you buffs from CC, but due to how cheap it is and how much you can use it, I had to throw it in. It's a 6 point universal card with giving you 6 power and active without having to be upgraded, which roots you in place but you are immune to any incoming damage or CC for 2.5 seconds. You cannot attack or use any abilities while in the gem, even channeled abilities to say you use Giddens Ultra, and then you status gem, his ult would stop and then you would be using the gem instead. It has a 60 second cooldown. You would want to use this card on heroes who will get right into the action, again more frontline heroes. This can be abilities for example running into the enemy then using it when they try to kill you, or to give your team some extra help to help you after you have overextended stupidly, or even when about to be hit by a heavy CC ability and ultimate. Giddens ultimate is a great damage and slow, but using status gem would generate all the incoming damage and slow. It denies moral guesses and should be ultimate if timed correctly. Any more heavy CC ultimates like steals, narbasses, even deckers which can trap you for some nasty combos but you won't take any incoming damage if you use status gem in time. You name it, it can do anything if you time it right and it can be a big game changer for you and your team with very little cost of card points. As it is now a universal card, I would honestly put it on most heroes that cast as frontliners, even some carries if the game on composition calls for it, but I still prefer Blink Shards on most of them. So basically this card fits a lot of heroes and is very much in the current meta, so I would highly recommend to try it out and see what you think yourself. Our second to last card is Toxy Gel. It is a 6 point universal card giving you 120 health and also the unique passive burst cleanse. Taking 400 damage within 5 seconds activates a cleanse. This has a 2 second cooldown. So what does this really mean? Well the simplest example is if you get stunned and before the stun ends you will see 400 damage within a 5 second window you will be cleansed from all deemed buffs so the stun will stop. Toxic Gel if triggered will cleanse most things, stuns, roots, slows, phases, blind, burn, poison, bleeding, even more guesses damage over time ability, hive, but her mark will stay on you I believe so she can still ult you if I am correct there. The main reason you want to use it is for those hard CC abilities but all those extra cleansable debuffs could be handy too especially more guesses hive. 400 damage in 5 seconds may seem quite a lot but being 6 card points this is more of an end game card. If you think about the earlier scenario I said, if Decker stuns you that would already be a 200-250 damage if it is level 4. You only need an extra 200-150 extra damage to trigger the cleanse. That's easily one carry shot. So in reality if there is more than one hero on you when you get hit by any hard CC mid to late game, you should be cleansed in a matter of seconds. This could very well save your life and works extremely well with Thermo Bond because Thermo regens your health and Toxic Gel can cleanse you so you can move while being healed. And finally we have Divine Shield, another 8 point universal card with 60 mana, 6 ability armor and a unique passive being spell block. This blocks the enemy's next ability and has a 45 second cooldown. It's in a very expensive ability but on the right hero against the right team it can be very very good. The most common hero you will see this on is Gideon when he ult. It will completely neglect the stun but of course if another ability hits him before he will lose Divine Shield and be vulnerable to the stun on his ultimate. Which is to the point that it's for those heroes that put themselves in very vulnerable situations to pull their ultimate off or worried they could get stunned. Countless is enough one so you don't get stunned and can keep attacking the necessary target. Like I said, against those stuns, roots or blinds it would be great, but if against none of those or just heroes that use abilities easy to get rid of the vine shield, then it's rather a pointless card. Any damage over time ability, long range ability like Wraith's knock knock can really screw you up here. To sum the card up, it's for you to choose a hero that can be really good if there's no hard CC on the other team, but they do have that hard CC, so it's risky, but if you play it right, it can be very much worth it. I wouldn't put this card on tanky heroes, as they have a lot of good anti-CC cards as it is, and like I said, it only takes one ability to complete remove it. This has a 45 second cooldown, so it's not super long, but you won't have it for the rest of that team fight. So that about does it for all the big anti-CC cards we currently have, and I hope it helped you learn 
one a fin or two and what ones to use on certain heroes and combo together to get the best out of them. I did do a Thick Blood Blight card in depth look only last week so you can check that out below or at the end of the video right now and I will see you guys next time.